I'm Denise Shire. I'm the majority um, landowner of the um, Jasper campground. May I make a suggestion that we re look at that list of who gets notified? Absolutely. And that goes back to the board for discussion? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, so that was, that was our result from our first public meeting we had. It was intended to center around notifications for the report folks so that we can look at that time. Kind of, but absolutely happy to add to that list. Modify that list because it is a year old now. It's about a year old. Sir, that some of that flow actually <coughs> went north into the river and, and affected folks in Georgia that were actually north of the site. I think that river flows south. It does flow south, but I understand that. It's a slow flow. So, um, yeah. just want to kind of anyway. open up the dialogue. Oh, I, know, I, know, I know it's a good list of questions. The really <laughs> have done. Today, earlier today, they really need to we met with our genetic genetic legislative delegation, yeah. Senator Bill Mockford. Uh, Representative Chuck Brandon and, and uh, Representative Jesse Show in our district for our state legislature in, in Madison at 1 o'clock today, along with EPA representatives from EPA, representatives from Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection, Swan River Board Management District, Department of Health, Florida Department of Health. Um, unfortunately, Georgia EPD. Uh, decided not to attend, for whatever reason we don't know, a little bit disturbed about that. But um, for those present here, we've, we've been working closely with the city of Isle Austin for the last year in our river task force. And we've had, I feel, significant cooperation between us as far as being now being informed in a timely manner and some things. And I know y'all have done a lot of effort, we've done a lot of work in the infrastructure, mainly geared towards these hydro events that we get where the, the, the plant overflows from stormwater infiltration and so forth. Um, it's unfortunate that we're here tonight to talk about, and, and just from our standpoint, um, I'll be frank, oversight, a lack of oversight, and um, quality control on the city of Dallas Park when it comes to your contractors that are out there doing your work. And I know you rely on them to do the work, but there has to be some form of oversight on was the work done properly, was it done adequately, was it done right, and is your system operating and functioning afterwards, the way it should be. And just to give you an idea, we know you know, my colleague here, Commissioner Adams, just briefly today made a mention in our meeting, 7.5 million gallons over a four or five day event equates to 40 to 50,000 gallons an hour that, that your plant missed, you know? And I've been told that it was three or four days after this work was done that your employees said, hey, we're missing a million, two gallons a day you do the math, calculation, and have to know estimates uh, at our plant. You know, and then you say, okay, then you go back and try to find out where this is happening. And, and I'll just be honest with you and just forgive me. For, it, I don't think that's good business. You got and just to be blunt about it. Um, we have issued in Madison County and uh, Hamilton County since December 9th, two local states of emergency that we've, we've issued those local states of emergency for our citizens. And we're providing water samples for our citizens. We've had uh, 183 test wells tested in Madison County with 38 that's come back positive for coliform. And a couple would have had heat color. Heat color. <coughs> uh, I mean, those are things that we're we're trying to raise, uh, you know, raise awareness 
And it's important to have your wells tested regardless of where you live and, and to make sure your water quality is, is accurate and good. Um, and I understand the permit's been issued. That's great for the basin that's going on for that. And I, I, I'm glad that that's finally been accomplished. And I'm hoping that in the future any major rain events where there's a stormwater infiltration that, that does occur, that that will be enough to keep the, your, your sewage out of the river. Okay? So, but that, that still goes back to the human factor and the quality of the work <coughs> that's being done your oversight of the work that's being done, and basically, I mean, you're permitted by Georgia's EDP. It's your system, and at the end of the day, regardless of who does the work, it comes back to the city of Valdosta as your responsibility to make sure your system is operating accurately, and, or act, operating the way it should be. And I know there's a lot of people here that are very frustrated about that. And I guess part of the conversation I like to have tonight is, what is the city of Valdosta doing from this point forward to make it have oversight of your system and oversight of your employees, oversight of who is doing the work for you? So, with that, I'll address the quality control issue. Uh, here's what happened uh, it was a minor adjustment to this little station. It's not a huge project, but we needed a construction manager out there watching. Uh, secondly, what happened was we did not realize they were making that adjustment. We did not know they were out. How we found out they were about that, is when we looked back in the logs from the company, and they showed this going out. So at that point in time, we didn't know they were making that adjustment to add all of this happening. So there was no way we could go out there and check something they did because they made an adjustment on their own based on them in, you know, continuing to implement the state system. So that's with that. Uh, we have SOPs um, that they that we follow as well. Uh, but like I said, we were not aware that this gentleman, this third party contractor, was making that. So we couldn't have that. I don't see what day one he had said, I hired behind that contract. It's our responsibility. We take it 100% and we don't take it lightly whatsoever. So. Uh, anybody that thinks other than that, uh, it is absolutely not true. It's about the frustration. We're equally as frustrated with it. As I've said, zero tolerance for school. Do we keep having them? Absolutely. Regardless of the people <coughs> in the the county right now, it's not always possible. So, but to address that, why that didn't happen, I'll go ahead and tell you as well. We have to. We did clean up as Gerald said, we got our numbers, we followed our protocol with EPD, we began an internal investigation. And all employees and all the rest of the to see what happened. That's, we couldn't have prevented it, but we could have found it sooner. I'll tell everybody this for the next time. We had two employees that did not follow specifically what they should have done, and that's why it lasted as long as it did. Because the employees were no longer with us. That's all I have. Best I can do to tell you that it was a, system, a series of some errors from the contractor and our employees, but we don't have to hunt them. It's our responsibility we're going to take care of. And I think we demonstrated that in the past. Yes, I know we can have them, but if you've been to these quarterly meetings, you know everything that we put into the system to make this not happen. Again, we don't want it to happen as much as you guys don't want it to happen. Any different questions? Oh, yes, ma'am. I deal with standard operating procedures and work instructions all day long with the Department of State, Department of Commerce, Department of Security, and Department of Treasury. So, you have a written report, post-event report. You have a corrective action report. I'd like to know what the corrective action report says, rather as, as opposed, opposed to dismissing two employees. Have you updated the SOP? and the work construction, and where is the corrective action report? We'd like to see the changes between the SOP and the work construction from then and now. The, the SOPs, like I said, they work. 
our employee, we had two employees that we did not do 100% of the SOP. So we haven't actually changed <coughs> SOP yet because we're still looking at those things. But again, we have those two employees that did not follow the prescription. <coughs> okay. so I went and made an error in the U.S. Department of State, and I turned in a report or a letter that said, this violation, okay, was due to human error, they come down on me so hard because we cannot ever say that there was a human error. There is a policy error, there's a process error, there is a training error, but it is not a human error. Somebody didn't have the right checklist or didn't have the That's not what I said either. That the proper protocol was in place. We had two employees that did not follow it specifically as they should have. Had they had, like I said, they wouldn't have prevented it by any means, but they could have found it on Wednesday morning or about this morning if they had done what they were supposed to do. So we're talking about prevention. We're not talking about something the day after it happened. Okay, we're talking about what can we, what piece of paper needs to change so this is prevented in the future so that we're not at the point where we're getting rid of people. Yeah, you know, as far as prevention, you know, that goes back to the mechanics and, and the technical end of it. And, I, you know, and, uh, and ironically, that's what was being installed at the site was the supervisory control and data acquisition, which is that <coughs> very process that you're talking about that would give you advance notice of any of any event at the, at the lift station. So, uh, yeah, what's being put in place? An advanced data system is being put in place at that station and at every other lift station in the city. In fact, in fact 